Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles and cousins, of course, and my new, new favorite, pineapple nanas and pineapple papas or grandmothers and grandfathers and baseball fans everywhere. Welcome to this edition of the Valley Baseball League's 2020 Rewind season. Tonight, we are recapping the Waynesboro Generals game against the Stanton Braves. We're actually going to take tonight's game two of that series, but we actually have to go back and talk a little bit about game one because we have a special guest star here. Everybody say hi to John Leonard. And we also have the crew, Jordan and Aaron are here. It's so great to have you guys here, having hey. a lot of fun with this one. Um, we were just getting started and ready to record this when John started talking about the first game of this series. And he made the um, mistake of saying to me, I saw things in that game I have never seen before. And I'm like, oh, er, we got to go back and talk about game one. Um, Aaron, before we get to you and you set the stage for this game, John, talk to us a little bit about um, game one. What was it that stands out in your mind as you think back about the playoff matchup between the Generals and the Braves? Well, everybody was kind of expecting it to be a coronation for, uh, for Waynesboro. Uh, they won all six regular season games against Stanton. Um, but the wheels came off for Waynesboro early in this one. And uh, what I was referring to when I said I saw things in this game I had never seen before, I think it was Andrew Check hit a hard ground ball to the second baseman. And not only did the second baseman uh, misplay the ball, but then when it got out to right field, it was hit so hard that then the right fielder made a bad play on the ball as well. So it was almost like two errors on the same batted ball, uh, which I had never seen that before. And then later, there was, a, there was a wild pitch with a runner on third. And the runner probably should have gone and didn't uh, when the Waynesboro catcher picked the ball up and walked back to the plate and then threw it back to the pitcher and threw it over the pitcher's head. And then the runner came home and, and scored. It was some of the most bizarre, bizarre stuff happenings that, that I had seen in quite a long time. Yeah. Was this your little league uh, home run, Aaron, if I remember correctly? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that was game one set us up for game two. What, um, it's looking kind of rough for Waynesboro. Is there anything more that needs to be said or what more can we say? Yeah, well, John mentioned, you know, that this was such a lopsided affair during the regular season with Waynesboro sweeping Stanton and then Stanton comes in, wins eight to two in game one. So I, I can't imagine how the generals were feeling going into game two, knowing that this is somebody's number that they had all season. And then for those crazy errors to happen, um, I'm sure their confidence was kind of struck a little bit after that game. So whoever ends up winning this matchup will go to the Southern Division Finals and they'll play the winner of Charlottesville and Covington. You know, Waynesboro was that team that just really dominated the league with the 31 and 11 record throughout the regular season. And then they get got in game one. So we will see what happens in game two. It's a definitely an interesting one. Yeah, speaking of interesting ones, what um, particular should our fans be looking out for, Jordan? Yeah, something interesting. You know what this game made me, made me think of? Christmas. And particularly the Christmas Story movie. And just it's weird, I know, but just hear me out on this one. There's the scene where Scott Fargus, he's just beating up on Ralphie and his buddies. And then finally, that snowball hits his face. Ralphie is Stanton, and that snowball was game six in the 6-0 and regular season series from Waynesboro. And then game one of the postseason is Ralphie throwing that first punch at Scott and knocking him on his butt. And all the kids at the playground are going, whoa, where did this come from? This is where we are right now as far as a playoff series is going on. So right now, I know it's the weirdest setup. But listen, you honestly have a team that I personally think just – and I, w I went back and watched the film. There were so many oddities. We saw the five errors on the part of Waynesboro. But I think a lot of this, when you look at the final score of that game, how much of this is Stanton just going, okay, we're done. Enough of this. I, you know, I can't take losing to these guys anymore. And really, you know what, I think that mindset too, when you come out – and, John, you're saying that Andrew Check is hitting, and we know he hits baseballs incredibly hard to begin with anyway, but he hits a baseball so hard that two guys essentially have one error off of it, or one play causes two errors. When you look at 
rivalries like this, and you can only get beaten up by somebody so many times before you snap. And it was an offensive performance for sure from Stanton out of game one. I think there's another great offensive performance by them tonight. I don't want to go and look at any of the hitter stats, though, because it's been so uh, reaffirmed of how amazing their offense has been. For that reason, I want to go and give a shout-out to Cameron Nolet because in his uh, six innings pitch, he only um, allows six hits. He gets half a dozen strikeouts. And then it's just another great – it's another way. It's another great way, excuse me, to bat up your uh, back up your offense because when the pitching is just as good as the offense is doing, essentially, Waynesboro, Scott Fargus, what can you do about it? And this is where Waynesboro, the team with the best record in the Valley Baseball League, is just somehow stunned to find themselves right now. It's one of the best stories that I've heard all year. This is unbelievable. Yeah, John, how do you respond to that? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting with amateur baseball, isn't it? Uh, I could have easily seen going into this series uh, the potential for Stanton to say, well, we can't beat this team, so we give up. And uh, they didn't. And in game one, they came out with a different mindset, a different attitude. And now you go into a game two, and Waynesboro is saying, uh-oh, uh, we don't win this one. We go home. And we were expecting to at least make the finals. Uh, so we'll see how these amateur guys are able to hold it together or not in this second one, second game. Yeah, well, I'm curious, um, just before we wrap this up, how much of it's emotion, you know, you're invested in it. And like Jordan said, you get the snowball in the face. And then is it you lose your heart and you lose the will? Is it that the wind comes out of your sails or is it, you're at the end of the season and you're tired. You've already had, you know, you've got the uh, sub, the Southern, I always say Southern, the South division title already under your belt. And maybe it's just time to go home. How much of it's an emotion and how much of it's just fatigue? Anybody? Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard to say, um, but it is important to remember that we're dealing with 18 to, to 20 year olds here for the most part. And sometimes, sometimes you get, the proverbial punch in the mouth and you, you back down and you just can't, can't generate the, um, the energy that it takes to come back. Um, I don't, I don't know that, that this is, that this is really what happened with Waynesboro. I mean, sometimes all of the bounces go the wrong way and you lose a game. It just, it happens. Uh, but it, with, with, uh, younger players, uh, obviously, uh, amateur players, anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen. Um, all right, anything else you guys want to add about this game, Aaron? Any? Jordan? John, anything we missed? No, nope, I think we got it. I think we got it. All right, well, anything can happen. Uh, you know, Stanton got the snowball in the face. Um, see if they um, get their revenge. Uh, they certainly do after going 0-6 in the regular season. Um, that's going to wrap it up for us, for Aaron, Jordan, and John and myself. I just want to say thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, we are continue to wish you all perfect health, and we continue to wish you all a speedy return to the baseball diamond. Uh, until tomorrow night, we will see you again. Be well, be safe, and please come back tomorrow. See you soon. Welcome to John Moxie Memorial Stadium in Stanton, Virginia, in the heart of Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. It is July 29th, 2019. On behalf of the Valley Baseball League and the Stanton Braves, welcome to this live stream. Tonight, game two of the first round in the South Division playoffs. The Stanton Braves will host the Waynesboro Generals after a Braves game one victory in Waynesboro last night. Pitch coming. It's going to be looped to center field, charging a Sigler. Could be trouble. It's going to drop on one bounce. Sigler fields it. Senior at ULM. That's Louisiana Monroe. The one two going to be looped to left field. Could be trouble, and it's down for an RBI single on an 0 2 pitch. Nolette does not locate the breaking ball well. It's a two out RBI single from yeah, Carson Klepsig. The, the Generals lead 1 0 in the top of the second inning. 0 1 will be lined to left center field. Going to be a tough play. It's going to be down for a base hit. It will be fielded on one bounce by Jackson Tate, and now with two outs, the Braves have their first hit of the ball game. Here it is. It will be taken inside for ball four. 
So Logan Flood draws a 3-2 walk. Here's the 1-2 to Eli Davis. He'll swing and loop it. The right field could be trouble. It's going to be down for a base hit. Peterson fields it. Coming around to score is Casey Hare. He steps on the plate, and we are tied. Here's the 1-0 to Chet Moore. Moore will ground this one back up the middle to Kobe Lopez. Takes a bad bounce, and it's going to be an E6. So the payoff pitch finally upcoming to Andrew Check. Here it is. He will take outside for ball four. Good eye by Andrew Check. 3-1 to Selden. Selden cranks it to right center field. It'll be extra bases. It'll get down and all the way to the wall, rounding third base and being waved in is Moore. He will come around to score. And it's an RBI double from Jacob Selden. The Braves lead 2-1. Here's the 3-2 to McCarty. McCarty will take low for ball four, and they are loaded. But a good eye by Hare. So it's 3-2 and two with one out, nowhere to put him with the bases juiced. Braves lead 2-1 in the bottom of the third, looking for more. 3-2 will be taken low by Hare for ball four and an RBI as Andrew Check comes in to score the Braves' third run of the game on a bases loaded walk from Casey Hare, the fifth of the night that were surrendered by Tyler Shuck, the starter for Waynesboro. 1-0 will be now back to the mound. It's off the glove of Deerman, and there will be no play. The Braves will score their fourth run tonight, and it drove in Casey Hare. His first pitch swinging is Davis. He pops it up, it. and they don't know where it is, the Generals, and it's going to drop in shallow right field, and the Braves will score another run. One one going to be lined to right field for a base hit, and one run is in. Logan Flood scores. Now Eli Davis will be held at third base by Tyree Blaylock, and it's now six to one. The Braves just continue to go station to station. Here's the two two. He'll bounce it, and will it get through? Yes, it will. It's past the glove of Kasiski. One run is in. Now Chet Moore, or Kent Rooklyn, I should say, coming to score as well, and it is eight to one. The Braves lead a two RBI single from Andrew Check. He joins the RBI party, and it's 8-1 to one Braves in the third inning. Of Jackson Tate is Cam Nolette. Here's the 0-2 pitch. This will be a line to left field, and it will be a base hit to lead off the fifth inning. Rare two-strike mistake from Nolette tonight. One will be lined into right field this time for a base hit, so two straight singles begin the fifth inning for the Generals. With still nobody out, they'll have two on. For Andrew Kasiski, the second baseman. Here's the one two to Lopez. Lopez will swing and lift it to right field. Not very deep. Charging in is Davis, and he makes the play on a full sprint for out number two. Good play by Eli Davis. He's been one of the players tonight of the game for the Braves. New market down one nothing in the series, looking to battle back. They lead three nothing. The seventh inning over Woodstock. 1-2 will be rounded to third base and past the glove of Hare and into left field. Rounding third and heading toward the plate is Jackson Tate, and he scores the second run of the game for the Generals. They now trail 8-2 in the fifth inning with two outs. So check quickly down 0-2 in the count. We'll check two walks to begin the game. We've seen him walk so much recently. His teams are just starting to say forget it. Broken bat. Other way will be a... Fair ball, and it'll be a double for Andrew Check. It's going to roll all the way to the corner. Now the left fielder, Jack Murphy, puts his hands in the air, claiming the ball is dead. Now he'll throw it back into the infield. Wow. But it will not, it will not be a triple. It went out of play, I believe they're going to say, as Andrew Check will be motioned back to second base. Well, Woodstock now leads Newmarket 5-4. to four. Newmarket led 5 Four to three in the top of the ninth inning. Woodstock scored two runs. Here's a base hit from McCarty left field, and the Braves score their ninth run. As Andrew Check comes to the plate. McCarty on first base. RBI single. That is his first of the night. 1-0 pitch going to be nubbed to second base. Now Andrew Check will come off the bag, flip it underhand, and Tanner James on to first base in time. Game Series Stanton. They win 9-2 and they eliminate the first place Waynesboro Generals here in Stanton.